In a few hours, the temperature may rise 60 degrees. Welcome back to another episode of Sweet Heat, and today we are making tacos, but not just any tacos, tacos norteños. So in the northern part of the country, cattle is king. They've got cows and they've got lots of cheese, and so that's what we're gonna be making today, a carne asada with a salsa with lots of cheese. We're gonna be eating some really, really decadent tacos. I can't wait. Okay, so today, as usual, I am getting heat from a lot of places. So I'm really excited because I have so many different kinds of chile. I've got a poblano, I've got serranos, I've got jalapenos, and I've got chipotle. The sweet in this dish is coming from oranges. I really, really love pairing oranges with jalapenos or with chipotles. I think they play really well together. I'm also adding a light pale lager that's gonna be part of the marinade. And again, lime, orange, chipotles, it's gonna be really, really delicious with that lager. And so that's what we're gonna be marinating the ribeye in. The thing about ribeye or pretty much all cuts of meat here in Mexico when you're grilling is they cut them really, really thin. So this is about an inch and a half thick uh, ribeye that they then cut into quarter inch steaks. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift it up just so you see how beautiful this is and then I'm using corn tortillas. You can use flour tortillas as well. I like both. The cheese is queso chihuahua, which is actually my favorite kind of cheese. So that's what I'm gonna be using. And so because this recipe already has a salsa built into it, I did also want to include a guacamole because I feel like when you're eating tacos norteños, you need a really delicious guac. And so that is what we're gonna be using our serranos for. So we can like change it up. We're gonna have jalapenos two ways, dried and also fresh. And then we're gonna have a lot of heat in the guacamole with our serranos. We're gonna make the marinade now. I'm really excited about this because these flavors are gonna be so good. So the first thing we're gonna do is start with a cup of beer. Uh, I'm using a Tecate, uh, you know, use whatever beer you like. Just, I would try and find a Mexican lager, uh, which, I mean, they're pretty easy to find. They're pretty much at every grocery store in the US, I think. I am using four gigantic cloves of garlic. These flavors are gonna get slightly muted as it grills, but garlic and steak, delicious. Delicious combo. gonna cover this with plastic wrap and put it in the fridge and let it chill for about an hour. If you have longer, it's gonna be great. So I would go probably no more than 12 hours for this, but minimally you wanna marinate it at least one hour.
So risky? What do you mean? Like, imagine, like, I don't know, you move your hand a little bit and just, like, your finger. Okay, I, like, again, this is not the first time I've, like, cut something. This is a beautiful combo. Vegetables and lard. Come with me. So we're gonna cook the salsa in three steps. The first step, we're gonna cook everything but the tomatoes. We're gonna cook all the peppers, the onions, the garlic until they get nice and tender. Step two, we're gonna add the tomatoes. We're gonna cook those down until they release a lot of their liquid and they get really jammy. Third step, we're gonna add the cheese, turn it off the heat, cover it, and let it melt. Okay, while the cheese is melting, I'm gonna go light up the grill. We're gonna get the steaks ready, grill them. When we come back, this salsa is going to be completely amazing and melty and delicious. The steaks are done. Also, it was incredibly hot outside. It was 101 degrees. So I am very thankful that I got this very, very thin cut of ribeye. So while the steaks are resting, I am going to toast the tortillas and make the guacamole. So for those of you who don't have a mocajete or a mortar and pestle, totally fine. All you have to do is just use a bowl and either a potato masher works great or even the, a fork. And I don't like to completely mash them. So you'll see, I'm just giving a couple of strokes just to smash it because when you stir in all the other ingredients, it'll continue to break down. And I don't want it to get completely smooth. I want it to be a little bit chunky. If you are using skirt or flank, you wanna make sure that you cut against the grain. So you can see the strands of protein are going from left to right. And so when I say cut against the grain, this is what I mean. You're basically just cutting them like that. And that will ensure that it's completely tender. Okay, I've wiped the sweat off my face and I'm ready to eat. Oh, okay. So I have to admit, as much as I am really into this meat, when, and I might have had a few bites of it, I'm really excited about that. This is my taco norteño that I'm gonna eat right now. Mm. Mm. The textures and the flavors, and even the the heat level, the um, the cheese and the tomatoes are actually really warm, and the the guacamole is a little bit on the cool side. <clears throat> and that was a piece of jalapeno or so I don't like with a really, really nice heat at the end. And the great thing about the uh, the steak is it has orange juice and lime juice, so it's really bright and it pops. You 
have to try this. Also, you have to subscribe. So we have what, like 40% of people that watch this show are like subscribing. Subscribe so that you can find out whenever there's another ridiculously overstuffed taco and you can make it. This taco is super easy. It can be done on the grill. You can do it in a grill pan. You can do it in a skillet. You don't even need to go outside. It can be the dead of winter and you can be making these ridiculously delicious taco norteños. I am really excited to finish the rest of this and I know that Sebastian is like all over there salivating waiting for me to give him this other one, which I may or may not do. And I will see you on another episode of Sweet Heat. I used to hate corn tomatoes, but now, thanks to 5-2, I love it. Mm-hmm.